It's day two of the conference and the final session wrapped up a few minutes ago. Now today, Prime Minister Andrew Holness officially opened the conference and he took the opportunity to, to address some of the crime concerns raised by members of the diaspora on Monday. He also outlined what the government has been doing so far this year to reduce the murder rates. Our approach has to be a gradual one. And our approach has to bring the people along with us. And uh, my own view is that our strategies are working. Our murder rate is now about 10% below what it was last year this time. And we experienced a similar reduction last year. Moving to the issue now of Jamaica's journey to cutting ties with the British monarchy, the opposition leader Mark Golding, who was also speaking at the session, stressed that the constitutional reform process needs to be more inclusive with members of the diaspora being an active part of the conversation. And part of that dialogue must in, uh, involve a discussion around what it is to be a Jamaican, what it means to be a Jamaican. I personally am of the view that we can't take a myopic, insular approach to this, given the realities of who we are and that we're spread all over the world and how dependent we are on each other. And indeed, Jamaicans on the rock are for our relatives and friends abroad. And our rules around who can participate at whatever level, in my opinion, should reflect that reality and should be inclusive rather than discriminatory. And before all of that, earlier this morning, Agriculture Minister Floyd Green announced that come November, the government will be launching the Eat Jamaican Day campaign right across the world. And he outlined how it will work. So we want everywhere in the world, November 25th, that you're celebrating Eat Jamaica Day. And we're going to ensure that for the month of November across the world, we're celebrating Eat Jamaica. So the Eat Jamaica Global Campaign will see us this year partnering with a number of our consulates and missions, especially in our main diaspora centers, to promote and organize activities that remind all of us that it is better to buy Jamaican and eat Jamaican right around the clock. Tomorrow, I'll be moving from the podium a bit and I'll be looking at issues affecting Jamaica's education and youth sectors and how members of the diaspora can be a part of the solution. Reporting from the Montego Bay Convention... Listen to my viewers and my subscribers. I hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful evening. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every, uh, any situation... Just always remember for call upon God. Always remember for pray. Because a prayer day keep the devil away. Now my viewers and my subscribers, we have a lot coming up inside this update. So you definitely don't want to miss none. But before we get into this, make a run the intro and come back. We soon forward. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. Them. We continually support the channel and I help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you are new viewers, first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell. So whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, this brother here, where I look on your screen, is one of the worst health minister ever in our history. All this man I do is wreck the healthcare sector. Him now spend on the healthcare sector. Him now spend no time to look after the healthcare sector. It's like life doesn't matter to them. Remember they used to call him the baby and alive. Who huh? remember that? When how much baby they lose them three pints and all of them something there? This man need to step away, you know, people. This man need to step away and him need to step away like right now. We don't want to hear him to step away tomorrow. But then again, everybody in the Jamaican Lyad party are just the same thing. They are just a set of liars. 
them lie. You. Now, people, check this. Now, people, opposition spokesperson on health and wellness, Dr. Alfred Daz, has turned the spotlight on the country's $4 billion program for the reduction of maternal and child mentalities. Promac saying that it has failed to achieve its aim. Now, Christopher, tough time. You're under pressure, you know. You're under pressure. You need to come down now, right now. All right? But well, listen to these people. Promac was a program for the reduction of maternal and child mortality. It was, it was conceptualized because of the, to support the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, which looked at reductions in maternal deaths, the deaths of mothers, and child mortality deaths, infants dying, children under five dying. And it was supported with a grant of 22 million euro, just under four billion dollars. The implementation documents were signed from as far back as 2013. We, at that time, wanted to reduce the incidence of maternal deaths and child deaths through development of screening, but not just that, the availability of operating theaters as well as ICU facilities or HDU facilities island-wide so that if there's a baby who needed ventilation or a mother who needed ventilation, there would have been enough HDU spaces to accommodate them at least for a few hours until they could be transferred to another institution. And we know exactly where these HDUs should have been uh, developed. Mandeva Regional Hospital should have had three maternal beds and six neonatal beds plus two isolation high dependency beds. Victoria Jubilee Hospital should have had six maternal beds, four neonatal beds. Cornwall Regional Hospital should have had four maternal beds and ten neonatal beds. With the Bustamante Hospital for Children, eight neonatal beds plus two isolation HD beds. So the EU gave money then, and the EU gave money again during COVID, along with other Jamaican entities and individuals. And we are still left in a situation where there's a dire shortage of intensive care unit beds and high dependency unit beds for adults and neonates. So the stories that we are seeing are not unexpected because they reflect a systematic issue. And a big part of that systematic problem is that we, we have a maintenance issue and we have accountability issues. Now, the aims of the PROMAC program to decrease maternal and child mortality rates have failed because of some other, maybe other um, incidents uh, or other contributing factors. But the fact of the matter is that over the last eight years, we have seen a steady climb in the number of mothers dying during pregnancy and delivery. The maternal mortality rate is the highest it has been in over 30 years. The infant, the neonatal mortality rate is higher today than it was 20 years ago. The number of children under age five who are dying is higher than it was 20 years ago. So there are measurable consequences for the failure to implement and maintain an adequate healthcare system. Now, I don't understand how Jamaican people them just so silent while this man wreck the healthcare sector. Because this man have no vision for the healthcare sector. He not decide if he make it better. He not decide 
to make the healthcare sector better off than how we stay. This man is a wicked man, a comedian, a liar, a criminal that should send home to go sit on a yard. There are several green papers, audits, and reviews within the Ministry of Health and Wellness that clearly outline the dilapidated state of the public health system. Even without resorting to these sources, there is a travel advisory issued by the U.S. State Department advising of the poor state of our hospitals and the prohibitive costs associated with accessing private health care. And this is borne out by the constant cries of the users of the public health system and the frustration of the health care providers themselves often manifested in industrial unrest and protests. And even now there are murmurings of unrest in some sectors of the health service. One therefore has to wonder what guides the priorities for expenditure in the annual budget for the Ministry of Health and Wellness. With a capital budget of $11 billion, nearly twice that of education, one would expect clear efforts to decrease inefficiencies, to improve the overall experience of accessing the public health system, and to address the major health threats affecting Jamaicans. However, these major threats of chronic non-communicable diseases, such as diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and cancer, have been, to an extent, sidelined in favor of massive spend on infrastructure concentrated in three hospitals. Yeah. The massive cost overrun huh. in the Cornwall Regional Hospital yes, will go down as the greatest Rich. project cost variation in the history of Jamaica yeah. at a staggering 1,100%. Yeah. Never before has any Jamaican alive or dead seen a project move from an estimated cost to completion of less than $2 billion and end up costing more than 10 times that amount at over $20 billion. And this figure is expected to rise further as the completion date is pushed farther away. And the only person who predicted it accurately was Maurice Guy, the member for Central St. Mary. It is telling that no one has been held accountable for this debacle. The Minister of Health has been bemoaning the lack of local expertise in hospital construction, but he's nevertheless decided to begin the construction of two new facilities at the UHWI and Spanish Town. We wonder what the logic is behind that when the English-speaking Caribbean's largest community of Portmore still doesn't have a public hospital. And when the, rest, the Western region is still struggling without a fully operational Cornwall Regional Hospital. And when the major parishes are without a facility that has basic diagnostic equipment. And in major urban areas there is an economically unsound reliance on using private facilities for public patients. Transported in scarcely available amb ambulances. With this budget, users of the public health system will continue to suffer from prolonged waiting times, overcrowded emergency rooms, inadequate hospital beds, and overworked and demotivated staff who can't wait for the next recruiter for a way out. Like the census, immunization rates are well below target, and the maternal mortality rate is at its highest level in over 50 years. The maternal mortality rate in Jamaica is at the highest, its highest levels in over 50 years. No budgetary changes to, to deal with these problems. Mr. Speaker, something is wrong here. Jamaican people, all I can say is that the Jamaican Liar Party have no vision, no vision and no intention to make our healthcare sector a better place. It will get worse and worse every day. And if you can't see it for yourself, then something wrong, something not right. When you see this man get so many billions of dollars to spend on the healthcare sector, him get both donation, loan, grant, and there's no money spent on the healthcare sector. You should know that this man should resign because this man is not a doctor. This man is a criminal and a liar and a comedian. Me can tell you that. Now, another thing that I want to touch on is uh, the Prime Minister himself, Mr. Bro God, Bro Devil, 
Mr. Andrew Coolness. When they introduce Mark Golding at the Diaspora Conference, this man just sit down, lap his foot, and close his hands. Him don't even as much as clap and call himself a prime minister. This is not a prime minister. This is a crime minister. And clearly, Jamaican people can see what this man is doing. He's sending a straight signal. See, a politics him say. And a dirty politics him a go play. Mr. Wallinus, if you put on a show, no man, clap. Let people see you. But then again, people, check this. Leader of the opposition, Mr. Mark Golding. Thank you, Mr. Master of Ceremonies. Honorable Prime Minister, Minister Johnson Smith, Minister of State Tara Long, Chairman of the conference and of the VM Group, one of our main sponsors, Courtney Campbell, Ministers of Government who are here, members of the Dipl Diplomatic Corps, all other distinguished <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, and of course the delegates who have made the effort to come to Jamaica to be part of this 10th biennial diaspora conference. <coughs> the theme of unity is important as we gather as Jamaicans to think about and discuss <clears throat> the way forward for our country. And the, indeed, the fact that this is the 10th biennial conference of its kind signifies that Jamaica is able to take united positions on important matters. The very first one was under the patronage or was well organized at the time by the then Prime Minister P.J. Patterson and the late Senator Delano Franklin, who at that time was responsible for diaspora affairs. And we've seen continuity as both major political parties recognize the importance of the diaspora and the singular importance of this kind of event in affording an opportunity for all of us to come together and to share what we have to share in the spirit of unity or love for our wonderful homeland, Jamaica. I congratulate the organizers for putting on this conference. I know it has not been an easy road, but we are here now, and you're seeing the fruits of your labor. Congratulations to you. <clears throat> Reality is that Jamaica, is a, we are a migratory people, and we always have been. And <clears throat> as it stands today, the Jamaicans living abroad constitute more or less a similar number to those living on the rock itself. Our diaspora and the support of our diaspora is absolutely critical to our survival as a nation. They are the largest provider of foreign exchange to our country. They support our balance of payments. They support the value of our currency. And indeed, during the pandemic, when the other critical source of foreign exchange, the tourism industry, basically shut down. Jamaica was able to get through it without any balance of payments or exchange rate crisis because of the stepping up of our diasporans in support of our country. And <clears throat> and indeed, the resources that are sent here are resources that directly benefit the Jamaican people. It is the prime social safety net for our people, their relatives abroad who provide support, but also so many good causes that the Jamaican community internationally lends its hand to, to help life be a little bit better here for our people in Jamaica, in healthcare, in education, and in a variety of other important philanthropic endeavors. We salute the diaspora for what they do for our people.
And indeed, as has been mentioned, we are going through a process of looking at our constitution with a view to becoming a republic. And part of that dialogue must in, uh, involve a discussion around what it is to be a Jamaican, what it means to be a Jamaican. I personally am of the view that we can't take a myopic, insular approach to this, given the realities of who we are and that we're spread all over the world and how dependent we are on each other. And indeed, Jamaicans on the rock are for our relatives and friends abroad. And our rules around who can participate at whatever level, in my opinion, should reflect that reality and should be inclusive rather than discriminatory or <laughs> exclusionary. And I'm hoping that we will have that dialogue because it's very important. And we want, insofar as we collectively recognize the importance of the role of our people from all over in helping our nation to develop, that dialogue is an important element of that. So I will just close by wishing you all a wonderful conference. I hope you find it very fulfilling, that you learn a lot, that you share a lot, and that you leave here feeling justified for the effort and expenditure that you made, made to be part of this. And again, I congratulate the organizers of this conference for making it happen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Now, I just want to say big up yourself, Mark Golin. One Mark Golin, one Marky G. The future for Jamaica. The Prime Minister that is going to change this country. The Prime Minister that have a heart of his beautiful daughters and son and a beautiful wife and have conscience and will take Jamaican forward. Andrew is afraid of Mark Golin. Me and you know that I'm afraid of Mark Golin. But, people, stay to thought and that down below in the comment section. Right now, I'm going to leave you with this video from Liquifier, a.k.a. Marvin. And, people, I want to take in the video keenly, people, and take the message seriously from this video. All right? I'm out. So, Jamaica, here we go on. I'm trying to attack every little issue we come up in but there are just some things we have to talk about and it, 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 if you don't talk about it then you don't have any relevance in this country as a citizen alright and from the year we start off like this I don't know say me very angry about what's happening well me always angry how is it that the current DPP or acting DPP the new woman there we were so happy to get rid of Paula because of the many atrocities that we have witnessed Paula Llewellyn committing over the time. We have seen where Paula was unfit, very unfit and very biased in her portfolio and in the office held as the director of public prosecution. Case in point, when the, the, um, the police woman, I've said it before, when the police woman who um, cut off the locks of the young lady's head, Enzinga King. It was the DPP who said no charge. Yes, when the former Minister of Agriculture, I don't know if him get back in post, at the time, Floyd Green, when he and his friends made a mockery of this country while everybody was under lockdown, when him that hotel a bus champion now we face for no movement there. When regular Jamaicans were being hauled and pulled, well if I get a yachts them, being hauled and pulled in the back of police, jump out vehicle and bad up and, and, and police did all kinds of things to regular normal citizens. The DPP who should have found this man guilty or who was guilty who should have made sure he paid he and his friends paid for their crimes as the regular citizens were paying you said no charge must come to you right so let me just give one of the two cases I, I could give you the third one right the former speaker of the house she was caught disposing of her garbage on the roadside her garbage on the roadside, police catch him, and police. Me know say the police when I say me not care who you be. You know me and you know say where you do you so wrong. 
right? The DPP, Paula Llewellyn, you were the person who said no charge must come to the woman. But had it been a regular Jamaican or a ghetto youth who would take up their little garbage bag out and go do some ups, we not even a reach news. We don't know say him if he go and lock up, he might go fine, he might go and probably pay all one six months in a prison or, or whatever because that's how we we'll treat the ordinary citizens. Now that we got rid of you because of those atrocities and more, we, 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 we not even know about, right? But it's time for you to leave the damn office and we don't know why they were keeping you around. We currently have an acting DPP because, of course, the matter of you, Paula Lewin, is not finished um, solving. They're not solving yet. yet they still want to get a quote and should be working in the office. So, you don't know why I give nobody the permanent position. You don't want to give the, the woman the acting. But we thought, we, the entire country was very happy for this replacement. And we thought this, this woman meant business. But there were two utterances that come out of your mouth, new lady. You knew lady, you knew DPP. Two utterances. I saw it last week and me ignore it, you know. Me ignore it in terms of not coming public by saying anything. Where you made a profound statement that the breaches, the Vibes Cartel, Vibes Cartel case, there were breaches, but it was justified. It was justified. There is no flipping way the word justify and breach can come in I see them sentence. Right? Now, today, me seen on the news again where you have a dark make a statement that is very similar to the same utterances you made last week. Like, this is no sickening because I am not a cartel fan in terms of I am just speaking because I'm my god in a prison and I'm done. I am speaking on behalf of every Jamaican citizen whose rights can by law be violated and it becomes justifiable coming from a person who sits in one of the highest seats in our country, that is utter rubbish and madness. And you should be fired. As a matter of fact, I think you should even be arrested for such utterances. Because you are literally making utterances where a few law. Mulan, oh, what kind of freaking country is this? Why is it in Jamaica? Normal citizens. You people in high positions, from the Prime Minister come right down, can disrespect, can make utterances, can, can be obviously um, seen and be proven as criminals and still walk free, allowed to perform your, 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 your public duties to this country take with money do anything you want to do as a matter of that take tfe country money right we have an integrity commission where we where, where obviously see um i've seen things where uno there's possibly six criminals and now they come out say possibly more based on their findings who are sitting in our public offices collecting millions of Jamaica money and no 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 go to prison but an average citizen an average citizen in this country they get to you them right the prisoners who were wrongfully incarcerated based on insufficient evidence and breaches of their constitutional rights and every single Jamaican deserves right to a fair trial a just system and everybody sit down and nobody now say nothing if these people can make these bold utterances to be blatantly tell us hey, yo we're wrong we know that but it's justifiable and you are the law who don't have people like Mala who fought who needs to go to prison for treason? 
And I'll tell you why I think that her act is treasonous. She and everybody else who sat on the um, Constitution um, Reform Committee, the CRC co um, Committee, right? Where she is going to talk about the fact that there were lengthy deliberations as it relates, as it relates to impeachment, to, to the Prime Minister and these people being impeached. And for the little ghetto you them gonna know what that mean. It simply means say, when you find out say the big officials of in the country are thief or commit any criminal act. They should be found guilty and be treated like a normal citizen when the court system is supposed to go to boobs and treat them there. They're not, it means they're not above the law to be found guilty and go do prison time too, if needs be. You are going to tell the youths them and tell the Jamaican people them say, you who are supposed to write the law, the law, the flipping law to protect every Jamaican and make the justice system right. You are gonna come up with your. your, your I can't tell if Jamaican people them say you know put that in a the in a the so-called reform constitution. Me personally not like the whole idea about a reform constitution. We need a brand new constitution because we know say. Uno in a go put all kinds of claws to protect on a nasty, dirty criminal self on the criminal friends. Let me tell you this, you know. You hear me? I tell you, say, me, Marvin Edgar. Now go turn your son of fight for people, them. Uno have to do, uno have to do. Watch a joke. Uno are evil. DPP woman, your need to step down. I am calling for your instant removal from the office. We need somebody different. Mala Ufort, instant removal from the, from the Constitution Reform Committee and anybody else who agree with you. That me say. Alright, me done.